cardiac myopathy we're going to learn about what this term annotates cardiac myopathy means there's some problem with the myocardium there's some minute problem or major problem with the myocardium we're going to talk about what cardiac myopathy is what does this term annotate we're going to talk about its types we're going to talk about how they are how they are classified what's the basis of their types next on we're going to talk about the progression of the disease we're going to talk about how from one end to the second end it leads we're going to talk about at what point we can intervene in between next on we're going to start with its types first of all we're going to talk about dilated cardiomyopathies we're going to talk about what dilated cardiomyopathies are what are the causes behind dilated cardiomyopathies because it's going to be totally intrinsic in nature that's what primary cardio dilated cardiomyopathies are we're going to talk about what genetic predisposition or what gene mutations lead to dilated cardiomyopathies we're going to talk about what are the clinical symptoms the patient will be presenting to you with we're going to talk about what are the gross changes inside the heart that you will look for when you will be looking for a patient suffering from primary dilated cardiomyopathies Next on we're going to go into secondary dilated cardiomyopathies. We're going to talk about all those extrinsic or environmental factors that lead to development of dilated cardiomyopathies. We're going to talk about if we discontinue any one of them, if we stop that kind of prevalence, what's the prognosis of the disease is going to be. Next on we're going to talk about hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. We're going to talk about how they are differentiated from dilated cardiomyopathies. in the term of the pathology in the term of their gene mutations and in term of their structural differentiation we're going to talk about how hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is leading cause of death in patients who are in people who are less than 35 years of age we're going to talk about how hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will manifest to you in a patient in term of clinical symptoms next on we're going to talk about arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy uh, cardiomyopathy in this we're going to talk about what kind of pathology leads to uh, arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy what's the basic cause of it what's the underlying uh, physical changes that it goes through and leads to arrhythmia next we're going to talk about restrictive cardiomyopathies and restrictive cardiomyopathies we're going to talk about what's the basic cause of restrictive cardio- cardiomyopathy and how it will manifest to you on a gross structure and what are the clinical symptoms of the patient and next on we're going to talk about sudden cardiac death we're going to talk about people who are below 35 years of age what's the leading cause of death in those patients and people who are above the age of 35 what's the leading cause of death in them in this we're going to differentiate between uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and coronary heart diseases these two being the major cause of deaths in two different age groups so for watching this complete lecture and other variety of lectures please subscribe to skyrocket.com it also contains variety of other lectures varying from anatomy physiology pathology pharmacology and going till the medicine it also contains a free trial of lectures so you can get adjusted to it so for watching this complete lecture please subscribe to skyrocket.com Thank you for watching